What is up YouTube? Welcome to Civic Minded. Today we are going to be replacing the clock spring in my 2014 Honda Civic Hybrid with nav and leather. Symptoms of this going bad include these buttons not working or these buttons only working intermittently, the horn not working, the airbag light being on. Uh, so basically the clock spring is responsible for connecting everything on the steering wheel to the rest of the car without breaking any wires. Well, they, they go bad and uh, the symptom I'm having is None of these buttons are working. I can do a quick demonstration here. Okay, so as you can see, my airbag light is off. However, if I push this button, absolutely nothing happens. That should trigger the Texas speech system saying the voice prompt can be interrupted at any time by pressing the button again or some such, something like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's not working. I've already tested these switches. They're good, so. Uh, my next best guess would be the clock spring itself, which I would say is probably the most likely failure point. Uh, to get the clock spring out, we need to take the steering wheel off, and uh, don't worry, it's nowhere near as bad as it sounds. Uh, but we do need to take the air back out, so the first thing we need to do is pop the hood, wait for the automatic headlights to turn completely off. Once your lights are off, which indicates your entire system is off, you can go ahead and remove the negative battery cables, just a regular 10 millimeter. Same place regardless of which trim you have. We do that, we pull this off, I'm gonna put it on the headlight here to make sure it doesn't touch that post at all. Oop, oh, well, be more careful than that. Uh, put, it, put it somewhere where it's not gonna reconnect to the battery. Next, it is recommended that you wait, I would say wait 10, 15 minutes before touching the airbag. You want the capacitors to discharge so it doesn't blow up in your face. Uh, in the meantime, I will show you the part. I'll leave a link to where I got it. I could not find an OEM part number for this, but this this thing is readily available. So, and it was it was forty bucks. So it's not this is not an expensive job at all. And a few minutes later, we're gonna go ahead and no lights. The system is totally dead. We're gonna go ahead and start taking the steering wheel off. Now, you might be tempted to loosen these screws and pull the airbag out and unplug it from the back. Don't do that. You're actually gonna be unplugging it for, from, let me turn the light on. You see there's this little kick panel here? It comes off really easily. You see that yellow connector and that connector on the side of it? Those are the airbag, you wanna unplug those first. These connectors come down from their housing very easily. The ground clip is easy. You may have to squeeze the tab, you may not, but once you do, it just comes right out. The yellow connector is a bit trickier because it's a bit stiffer, but this black piece here, you're going to want to push this back and then separate the two connectors. You need two hands for that, so I did it off camera. Now to remove the airbag, there are two T30 Torx bolts, one on each side of the wheel. They are held in place with thread lockers, so they're, on a, they're going to feel like they're on a lot tighter than they are. What you want to do is instead of using a regular screwdriver or instead of starting out with a regular screwdriver, you're going to want to use a ratchet. Now if you don't have a dedicated Torx driver for a ratchet, you can use one of these screwdriver to quarter inch drive adapters. That's what I did and it worked fine. I would recommend that you try to get the driver locked into the Torx bolt before putting the ratchet on it. It, it falls off very easily, so just be aware of that. Once you get it started, you shouldn't have any problems getting it off and it'll be exactly the same on the other side of the steering wheel. And once that's out enough, a uh, regular screwdriver will get it the rest of the way. And uh, be sure to catch it. These are not locked in by the wheel, they actually come out. So be sure to catch it. Maybe get extras. Actually, the manual recommends that you get extras, but well, I'll, I'll show you when I'm reinstalling them. Okay, so once you have both of those out, you're just gonna wanna lift on the back of the airbag. Be careful to not scratch this plastic piece. As you can see, I did, and now I have to replace it, so. Uh, go ahead and lift that, and you may you may have to move these wires around a little bit. Mine came out pretty easily. Just lift that out, set it down face up. So if it blows up, it's not going to rock it out and hit you. And now we are presented with this. Uh, first thing we need to do before we take the wheel off, unplug this electrical, and then this yellow one for the airbag goes directly to the clock spring. So we'll get that out when we get that out. The main bolt that holds the steering wheel on is a 14 millimeter. You are gonna need an extension to get it off because there's no room to get a ratchet in there. If your vehicle does not have a locking steering wheel, which mine does not, so trying to loosen the bolt is just gonna turn the wheel to the left, I would recommend that you hold the wheel with one hand, hold one of the spokes, and then turn your ratchet with the other. And have a breaker bar ready because that bolt is on tighter than you might think. And now that it's like broken, it's coming out super easily, so. You can do the rest of it by hand or with your extension. See, it's not all that long. Uh, before we pull the steering wheel off, we want to take note. You see there's a little tick there on the steering shaft, and you also notice that there's a little tick on top of the steering wheel. 
Those have to line up when you put the steering wheel back, and it doesn't look like I did that very well the last time, so. Now we can go ahead and take the wheel off. It, it might take a couple of yanks. It didn't take a puller for me. If it takes a puller for you, those are the holes you screw the puller in. So you're basically just gonna wanna yank it, wiggle it like it's a loose tooth, if you remember ever having loose teeth. Yeah, and the wheel will come off just like that, and it looks like something else is plugged into it. Hang on. Uh, the airbag connector goes in through this bigger area, so just take note of that. With that out, we have access to our culprit right here. Uh, I thought I thought I was gonna have to take this cap off the new one. It doesn't look like it, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> uh, next thing we want to do is we want to get the uh, steering column all the way out, at least all the way out. You know how to do that. There's a little locking thing down here. Uh, get it all the way out. Just pry up on this. It's super, super easy to do with the wheel off. And then we have three screws holding this bottom piece in. One, two, down here there is a third with a flange. Once that's off, go ahead and unhook this uh, lever here. Comes right out, set this aside, and now we have full access to the clock spring. I don't believe we have to take the stocks out. Uh, I'll let you know if they do, it's really easy. They just, there are just two tabs on top that you squeeze, you unplug the electrical in the back. Very easy, I'm gonna put this one back in. But I believe the clock spring is only held on by three tabs now, one there, one down there, oh, and of course the uh, electrical's in the back, but uh, maybe the screw too, uh, I'll let you know. Nope, it's just the tabs and the electricals, so there's one up here, one here, one here. Uh, they were really tight, so just be prepared for that. I mean, try not to break it, it's an old part, actually. I'm, I'm wondering if this is the one I bought is the actual OEM part, but... Once that comes down, that will reveal three more electrical connectors. This one is for the steering angle sensor for the backup camera, and there's a hair on it. I don't know why, but these are very, very, very JAE Honda connectors, so, well, these two are. You'll unplug, squeeze the tab in the back, they come right out, and I'll tell you how to get this airbag connector out. And I never filmed that, but it works just like the others. Slide the black tab back, pull the connector out. Here's a new one, it'll go on just like that, but before we put it on, you notice there's no angle sensor on this one. We need to swap the angle sensor, and I don't know this if, I don't know if you're gonna have this if you don't have the backup camera, but we need to swap this angle sensor onto the new one, and I'm thinking it's just held on by those clips, I'll let you know. Okay, there are a total of four clips that hold it on. One, two, three, four. My strategy was to start with one of the side ones, and then move on in a circle. Uh, try not to spin this too much, if you can help it, because this, this I believe, is what controls your backup camera angle, so when you're backing out, when you turn the wheel, the trajectory changes, so don't turn this too much, you don't want that to be off, but I believe if we take the new clock spring, snap it in just like that, and now it's locked, because the new clock spring is rock locked. And then from there, we're gonna simply go ahead and line it up, line up the two pegs, there are two pegs on it, line it up, and then snap it in like that. And I believe the last thing we need to do is pull this out, just like that. Now that's free to move. Now we can go ahead and get the wheel back on. Uh, before you do that, make sure you re-plug in your electricals. The angle sensor and infotainment should be easy. They just snap in like so. Airbag. Maybe this can be done with one hand. I kind of need depth perception to do that, so sorry if I'm shaking the camera. But it just snaps in like that. Now we can put the wheel on. Okay, it might be easier to put this stuff on first, the uh, steering column cover. It goes on exactly as it came off. Just pull this, slide it over, get it in all the way, push that back, push this up, and try try not to sp spin the clock spring because you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to break it. I don't think there's any guide to when it's done a full rotation. So don't spin the clock spring. Get this back on. Same three screws reverse the removal. So just snap back on. You can actually, you can do that when the wheel is back on as well. I just think it's easier because you've got all this room, the wheels off, but when we put the wheel back, we want to once again line up our pegs. Uh, we see the line there. We see the line on the steering shaft. Um, if you don't have that for whatever reason, get like a Sharpie or something before, before you take the wheel off, obviously, but get like a Sharpie or something and draw it just so you remember exactly how the wheel goes on. Make sure your yellow airbag wire on your new clock spring goes through this wide area here before you put your wheel on. With that, you can go ahead and shake it a bit. Make sure it goes all the way on. Uh, you can go ahead and reconnect your electrical, and you can put your bolt back, which 
This bolt gets torqued to 29 foot-pounds, it's a 14 millimeter. Hold the steering wheel like this as you're torquing it. All right, and with that on, you're gonna wanna go ahead and snake your airbag connections back to where they were, or at least approximately, where you can get them from under this little kick panel here. Now would be a really good time to clean the area around where your airbag sits, because if your car has as many miles on it as mine does, uh, yeah, that probably hasn't been clean in quite a while, so. Take the opportunity to do that and uh, go ahead and put the airbag back in. Make sure this wiring goes. You can you can kind of use this little opening to help you get the airbag wiring back in. Just make sure it doesn't get pinched. But uh, once we do that, I will show you because there, there there is kind of a trick to putting the airbag bolts back in. Uh, you notice that these have some green stuff on them. Uh, that is thread locker. What you're supposed to do, according to the manual, is get brand new bolts that have thread locker on them already. Uh, I've already had this wheel off. I didn't do that. I used, I just bought some thread locker from AutoZone. That seemed to work fine. These were on just as tight as they were the first time I took them off. So go ahead and add some thread locker to this. Have a paper towel ready if you do, because it's, it, it kind of gets everywhere when you're trying to insert it into a tiny opening like that. <laughs> Maybe mine was supposed to have a door there. Yours might if it doesn't, but get that in there and you're going to want to torque it to 86 inch pounds. I will try to show you my setup for that. So upon reinserting the airbag, the strategy for the connectors is to kind of get them started in the slot there where they're going to meet up with their mates on the car and hold it like that. Be careful. You don't want any static on you when you do this because the airbag could still go off. It does have explosive devices inside, but get that in there. You can use a little trap door to help fish through if need be but push your airbag back in so that the holes on the sides line up. Make sure both these connections come out with ease. You may have to play with them a little bit, adjust the airbag as needed, but snap it back in so it's relatively steady. And now we can go ahead and put our bolts back. All right, so the winning strategy for getting these bolts on is uh, you kind of, this doesn't really sit in the uh, locked position on its own. You kind of have to push it up like this. And then you want to just get, get the thread locker on your screw like this, then lock it onto your driver like this. And then you kind of need to, you kind of need to feel around in there. Let me show you the correct angle. You'll know when it goes in, you'll feel it, you'll feel it kind of go in a bit further, but tighten it as much as you can with the screwdriver and I will show you how we're going to torque it at the end. So you're going to use the same little adapter piece you used to take them off to torque them. Uh, get that in there and then get your tiny torque wrench set to 86 inch pounds, you'll be good to go. Once those are in, it'll be very easy to get these electrical connectors plugged back in. They go in the same way they went out. Be sure to tuck them. Tuck them away as much as possible. I don't think they have to snap in perfectly, but the more you, the more you can get them secured, the better. And that's it. It's now been about two weeks since I made that video. Unfortunately, replacing the clock spring did not fix my problem. But as you can see... After the beep, say... It is fixed now. It ended up being something I kind of had a feeling it might be, but now I know for sure it was. Um, if you remember back in April, I uploaded two videos on how to add a rain sensor to this car. One of them was for vehicles with no automatic headlights and the other was for vehicles with. A little backstory of how that came to fruition is I tried it using the method for vehicles without automatic headlights first because it's the CAN bus. It would work in a vehicle with automatic headlights. And then I discovered that having both this rain sensor, which is also a light sensor, and that light sensor on the same CAN bus caused a lot of problems. So I decided to move it to the light sensor. I moved the CAN lines and I got power from the light sensor too because it was just easier. Well, I left the connection in the back of the radio intact, which the non-automatic headlights connection is in the back of the radio. Uh, that connection had a total of four wires, two of which were the can lines that went to the rain sensor, and I guess the other two were those three buttons. So those obviously failed over time. Uh, maybe a solder joint broke loose. It, it could have been anything, but removing that harness, which I was really only using for can tapping anyway, and plugging the stock harness back into the radio fixed the problem. So hopefully that will help you fix your clock spring problems, whatever they may be. As always, if you got any questions, feel free to leave me a comment, shoot me a direct message, shoot me an email now, aidencivicminded at gmail.com. And as always, have fun, drive safe. I'll see you in the next one.